everyone, I'm Lou Collins and thank you for joining me on my channel. Now I'm guessing that you've pressed to play this video because you would like to learn how to get started with mixed media. It's really simple and I'd like to introduce you to my mixed media method. Now this is a five step concept that I've developed that helps me turn a blank page into something like this. So I'm going to teach you how to work out your white space, how to choose your colors as well, how to then uh, start adding contrast and depth, but it's all very, very simple. Once you follow this method, you'll be able to apply that to any of your projects in the future, whether you're a beginner or not. So let's get started straight into this tutorial. So let's get started first of all as a complete beginner with what you're going to need to create mixed media projects. So you're either going to need um, a, an art journal or a journal to create into or if you like to create onto cards then you're going to need some uh, cardstock. Now with both of these you want the paper or the cardstock to ideally be something like a watercolour cardstock um, so it will hold the medium. So what you're looking for is something that's a really heavy weight. You can pick it up and you can feel it. This has got a bit of texture to it as well. Um, this one is slightly brighter white but it is watercolour 300 GSM so I know it's a heavy weight and because it's watercolour it's going to really hold all our wet mediums without crinkling and warping. So if I'm working in a journal I will go direct to my page usually. If I'm working on a card base I will use a piece of cardstock and then I will trim it down and I'll put that onto the front of my card when I'm finished. That just keeps the base nice and clean without any ink splodges. So you're also going to need a way of applying colour. Now this could be with things like uh, I have Distress Inks and Distress Oxide ink pads. So any sort of ink pads, they don't have to be the Distress range, but this is very popular. You can use ink sprays as well. These are ideal. Uh, again, lots of different brands out there. You can use watercolour paints or, as I've got here, watercolour inks that are ready mixed for you. Uh, you can use colouring pencils, but I would say something like an ink that's water-based because you can then use water techniques to mix them around, move the colour on the page is ideal. And coming onto that, you're also going to then need some water. This might just be a cup of water with a brush or like this, a spray bottle, which I actually need to fill up, but a spray bottle for applying it. And we can do that in different ways as well. Hopefully we'll get through that in this video too. You're going to need some things to clean up with as well. So some wet wipes and some kitchen towel. And then you're going to need elements for applying detail pattern design. Now I use two different things mainly for this. So I use stamps. I've got a huge range of texture stamps here. I use things like alphabet stamps for backgrounds as well as writing words. I've got lots and lots of different detailed stamps. Some of these I'll use the whole thing. Some of these I'll just use tiny areas of them for adding pattern detail images. I've got more words there because each, each bit of mixed media usually has some wording on it as well. This is one of my favourite stamps for adding texture and design. You've also got stencils you can use as well and with stencils you can go and put through colour just to build up kind of depth of colour or you can actually put texture paste, dimensional paste and such through these too. There's lots of other items on the market that you might need to use. I would say it's really helpful if you've got something like a heat tool, which will speed up the process for you. But don't worry if you haven't, you can always leave things to air dry. Now, aside from that, I think really it's just the willingness to have a play, to be creative and to not worry about it. Because essentially with mixed media, there is no right and wrong way. This method is simply going to guide you and help you build the confidence to start creating your own mixed media art. So step one in the mixed media method is to define your white space first of all. And you might, you might be able to keep this in mind or you might want to use a pencil on your paper or cardstock to define this at the beginning. You can, you'll soon lose the pencil marks underneath color anyway. Now, white space, for those of you who aren't sure what it is, is not always white. White space basically means an area of um, 
an area of the page that doesn't have much detail on it. And what it does, it helps to draw the eye to the detail. So for example, on this piece here, my white space is kind of around this area, all to the right hand side. We've got a little bit of white space down this side. And then this centers, this strip here is where the detail is. It's all focused in one place. On this card here, the white space is all around the edge with the detail, the focal point being in the middle. So we need to work out where is our white space going to be and where is the focal point going to be. This just helps make it easier for us to focus on one area um, and not get too absorbed in putting color and texture and detail down everywhere because when you do that you can end up with what I call the pizza effect and the pizza effect is where you take color embellishments texture and throw it on everywhere like you would with pizza toppings and uh, that way really you've got nowhere to draw the eye you've got no focal point and the page can just look a little bit messy um, by pinpointing one area to focus your embellishments on this is really going to help you certainly in the beginning because I know a piece of white canvas or paper or cardstock or art journal page can be really scary once we've defined what we're working on it's so much easier now I find um, sometimes if I'm lacking inspiration for where my white space is going to be I take the simple kitchen towel and I'll do this two ways I'll either lightly crumple it up depending on the size of my card or paper what you want to do is define uh, around about a third of your page as where you're going to have your focal point. Everything else will be white space. So if you crinkle your uh, kitchen towel up to about a third of the size of your page and just simply from a height, drop it on. So for me there, I could then take a pencil and I could draw around this area at the top. So just there, that's where we're going to focus. Now I appreciate the light uh, doesn't make that easy to see. I've drawn it very, very lightly. So our focal point for this page is going to be the top left hand side there. So step two in the mixed media method, and this is adding color. Now this is maybe where people get quite scared. Now you can add color to your entire page as I have here, um, or you can add a small amount of color. Now I'm going to do it small and we're going to keep a lot of this quite light. Um, and white, I want that to be my base colour. You could, as I say, fill all of this with colour. It doesn't matter. So as I said earlier, my colour for this particular piece is these colours. Now the, the way I've chosen these is I tend to go for tonal colours. Let's just move these out of the way now. So our tonal colours are greens and blues here. So I've got a green, a blue and an in-between, okay? So a teal colour. These are all tonal, they work beautifully together. And then I've got my pop of colour, which is going to be yellow. This is not a colour combination that I've used within my mixed media projects before. So it'll be really fun to see how this works out. Now you've got a couple of different ways you can apply your colour, of course, and there'll be different videos out there for that. You can use, again, your sprays, your watercolours, whichever you wish. The way I prefer to apply my colour to my mixed media projects is usually by doing the smooching technique, with which lots of you have probably heard of before if you've been around within card making paper craft for a while. So I'm going to start first of all with one of my lighter colours. Now I'm always going to do my contrasting colour last. I'm going to apply some of my ink, and this is a Distress Oxide, to a plastic mat. Now this might be a plastic blending mat, a piece of acetate, a piece of clear packaging, something like that. Something you can wipe clean and use again. I'm going to spritz this with some water and I'm also going to spritz some water over my page. Now by spritzing over the page, I'm letting the fibers just soak up some of that water. When I apply my color, the water's going to seep through some of those fibers much easier um, or the color is and it's just going to give it a lovely watercolor effect rather than this going on too heavy. So all I'm going to do is turn this over. I'm not going to worry about things like splodges and splats. We quite like those and I'm just going to press that down. Now if you were to leave this on the page where it is now until the paper has completely absorbed all that water and colour and dried, you're going to have this very straight edge here and here. We don't want to do that, so we're going to lift this up quite early. You can take your kitchen towel and you can lift up and splodge around 
there you go see already we're adding texture just by using kitchen towel so that's just one layer and you can see because I sat that on there a little bit long while I was talking to you I've kind of got some straight edges here but we're going to even those out we're now so that's our base color we're now going to add a little more so I'm going to go with a little less ink this time and I'm just going to add a couple of splodges like so and spritz with water just to start these blending in now if you think that's a bit dark for you you can again you can start lifting off color don't be scared of color though because we are going to layer over the top of this Another way you can apply some colour is again to water down some of this ink. Let's do it with the Uncharted Mariner colour. And you can take yourself a paintbrush, which I've just got one here. Now it's, I'd always say wet the bristles of the paintbrush as well. And we can basically make our own watercolour and then drop that over like so. Okay, so again, we're, all, we're focusing at the moment our colour at the top here because this is where our focal point's going to be. You can have areas that drip down if you wish. So once you've done that, you could hold it up and allow it to start dripping down. And don't forget with watercolour, it does tend to fade a little bit. It lightens as it dries. There we go. Now, what I want to do before I add my contrasting colour, because what I don't want is my contrasting colour, my bright yellow, to mix in with the blues and greens. That's not going to give us a pop of contrast. So I'm going to bring my heat gun in and I'm just going to warm this up and dry off the excess. Now, if you don't have a heat gun, don't forget you can just allow this to air dry for a moment. And at the moment, do not stress about what this looks like. I would always say it's going to look like a hot mess every time when you do this. This is always the point where I start to regret all my decisions so far already. Um, but if you keep going, it will turn into something really beautiful. So just making everything dry. And if you're concerned about your paper curling up, don't worry about it right now. What you can do is when you've finished your project, if you have got some paper curling, which I've just got the corners here, if you spritz the reverse of your paper with water and then again heat, heat set it, heat dry it, you're going to flatten everything back out again. It's just that applying water here and heat here is expanding the fibres on this side of the page and this side they're staying quite rigid so that causes that kind of that difference in um, shape. So now to add our yellow. So I'm going to put a little bit of this down, a little bit of water. Like I said, I don't want this to mix in with the blues and greens too much. So I want to keep this quite, um, quite bright. And I'm just going to dab this in a few places. I don't want to end up with it mixing at all. There we go. I might just see if I can get that to run down, which might mean bringing in your paintbrush again. Bear in mind I've used this for blue. That would be nice if that would just run down there a little. Let's see if we can get that to do that. There we go. So sometimes just overloading the top of a drip can cause that. There we go. So we've got that lovely drip there. Now again, a lot of this will be covered over but you've got your basic colours down. So I'm happy with that. Now I've got some areas around here. I'm still kind of keeping my white space. I've got some areas around here that have splats and smudges of colour. We're not going to worry about those. They're going to be absolutely fine. So we've now added colour to our page. Let's move on to step three. So step three is now adding texture. This can be done in a number of ways and it's good to note here that some people like to add the texture and the colour afterwards. There's no right or wrong way. As I said before, there never is a right and wrong way with mixed media. You may decide that if you're using texture paste and you think adding your colour on top will create some lovely depth and different colours, do it that way, add your texture and then your colour. You can also have a play, texture, colour, texture, colour, start layering them up. Don't worry too much, this is a complete beginner's video where I'm going to talk you through each of the stages, mix and match them as much as you want to. 
So texture comes in a number of different forms. As I briefly touched on when I talked about what you're going to need, the main two items I use for adding texture are stamps and stencils. But if you want to add uh, layers as well, things like book pages are going to work really well because you've already got some text printed on them and the, uh, the texture of the actual book page looks beautiful. So you could glue a piece of a strip of book page or punch some circles from book pages and put them on and then maybe even do your color again, allow them to go over and you'll just notice that dimensional texture in the background. I'm going to leave my paper smooth because I don't want my book to be too bulky. So I'm going to use texture paste and stamping. Now I tend to go with the stamping first because once you've added texture paste, it's raised up and then stamping over the top gets a little more difficult. So I'm going to first of all put down a bit of uh, texture with the stamps. And this is usually going for me going to be either black or one of my colors from in here. So you could use alphabet stamps. This is a really good way of getting a kind of two for one product that's going to give you lots and lots of different, I suppose what's the word, uh, different versatility with it. So you can pick these out and create words with them or you can just create overall texture. So I think what I'm going to do is use an ink here and I'm going to go in with my Uncharted Mariner first of all. And this is one of the colors I used in the background, but I didn't use a lot of it. So I'm just stamping over the entire area here where I've got my color first. And I'm going to press all of these down. So experiment with your stamps. Now I didn't map out exactly where this would go. You can see there I've added some texture in that lovely blue color. Then I'm going to take another stamp. Um, these ones work really well. This is from my Textures Paris Romance collection. They're, they are image stamps, but they also work really well as a background. So it's got some script in there. And I'm going to use a black ink for this. Something like Memento is perfect, VersaFine, anything that's a nice detail black. And I'm going to particularly use the script area. I'm just going to place some script down in a few random places. I'm still sticking to this sort of area here. There we go. I might do a little bit over here, just a touch and a little bit down here. And occasionally, just occasionally, you'll want to bring a little bit of design down to the bottom here. So we can already see we've got our white space but it's not excluded from the design because we've got a few splats coming down this way as well and out here and we've also got some of the detail kind of it's almost like if you just imagine a few bits kind of get let loose and they spread across the page and, and bump at the edge kind of thing that's how I like to look at it anyway so then we need to add some texture and what I tend to do is do this in white uh, that's if my background's white. It's really going to add a lovely pop and add texture into there. Uh, I've got all sorts here. So I've got so many textures designs. Now I often come to my alphabet one, but I've already used an alphabet in there. So I won't use this today. This is part of the reflections range within textures. Uh, I have, again, some more letters and words there, random letters. That's part of the, um, oh, that was the, I can't remember now which one that was. Maybe it was Mariposa collection. I've got some damask. That's quite heavy. What I'd like, I think this will be perfect. I think this is really going to set the scene for our focal area. Now, using a stencil, you can simply place it on and you can go ahead and uh, do your stenciling through, whether it be colour or texture paste, as I'm going to use. Um, for me, I like to spray the back of the stencil though. It won't affect your work if you use the correct spray. It's going to hold your stencil down onto your paper and reduce the likelihood of, you know when you use a stencil and the ink seeps through and underneath and cause that blurred image? You don't always, you might want that to happen. You might love that effect, but I don't. So what I tend to use is a temporary spray. Just reach for that there. So stick and spray is absolutely fine. Um, and so this is a repositionable and temporary glue, a non-permanent glue spray adhesive. So I will just spray my stencil and do that in a well-ventilated area. As you can probably hear, I've got the doors wide open today because you can hear the birds singing. So 
we'll give that, usually it says 30 seconds. I don't usually find it actually needs 30 seconds. Decide where your center's going to be. We let our ball of kitchen roll earlier decide that. And I'm just going to press this down as much as possible. Now, because I've got the rings at the top, that is a little bit harder at the top there. But there we go. So we, this particular stencil is going to create this sort of starburst or sunburst effect. And this is going to give us uh, even more of an eye into our focal point. So just taking the lid there off my dimensional paste. If you're working with a paste, um, the best tool to spread this with is a palette knife. Now you can get wooden and metal ones like this, or you can get uh, plastic ones. So I'm going to take not too much to start with, a little bit as if you're spreading butter. So on a butter knife and just scrape that through. Okay. If you feel your stencils lifting up at all, don't apply your paste because that it just will seep underneath. Now, the spray is never foolproof, but it should help reduce as much of that spread underneath as possible. Now I'm going right to the edge of my page there, right to the edge of the stencil. Of course, I'm just avoiding where the rings are at the top because we simply can't get any texture there. And don't forget, with every part of your mixed media project, the likelihood is, until you get to the latter stages, that things can be covered up with more layers, more texture, more colour, um, more design. So don't stress too much. Now with a palette knife, always ensure you give it a wipe because texture paste dries ridiculously hard. So now I'm going to carefully lift this up and we've got our starburst there. Now that is quite subtle, um, but I really love it. I love that we've got the white coming through the color there. It's beautiful. Now I'm going to just give this a wipe as well and some water because texture paste, just a side note for you, it, as I just said, it does dry very hard. It will dry extremely quick on a stencil, uh, even if it's not even a warm day. It is here, but it will still dry very quickly and it will clog up the small detail on your stencil. So give them a wipe, a clean straight away. So now we need to think about our focal point and this is our fourth step in the mixed media method. So your focal point is your main image. Um, I, do, I very often go with butterflies. I don't know why, it's just something I'm very much drawn to. It could be an image, a ticket, it could be the sentiment, it could be the main wording if you want it to be. Um, and you do need to keep in the back of your mind um, what sort of wording you might want on your page. What is your page saying? What is the message with it? Um, and if you already know the size of that, that's usually quite helpful. So this could just simply be uh, a large sentiment on there and that would be enough. If I was doing a card, that would be fine. I, like I say, love to go with butterflies and I think for this one, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now I've got uh, a number of butterfly dies and I do find die cuts are quite helpful for this. You may already have yourself some um, some items like stickers, for example, some rub-ons, some e ephemera, something like that that you can use instead. Like I say, something like a tag or a sticker, um, sorry, a tag or a ticket is ideal here. It's already done for you. But these being my gorgeous Mariposa butterfly dies. Let me just get the everything out for you. So firstly, we do have a large outline die. Um, but this die comes in two halves and the reason being that if you want to put it onto just half of your page, if you wanted to put that onto there, you could do, which would be beautiful. In fact, I think I might do that and then this would be for the centre of my wording. So I was going to have this for the centre of my butterfly. So let's just show you. Uh, so it would have sat something like that, which is actually huge. So I think... I'm going to put the butter, cut a butterfly and put that there. And then this, the center of the starburst is going to be where my wording is. So that's where my message is. So I've die cut my butterflies. You can see there on my butterfly half and that's going to sit there. Now I want that to really pop a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the silhouette of the butterfly and I'm going to place that down 
whereabouts I want it to sit. Now I'm going to bear in mind that I'm actually going to create a frame around this page and I do this with most of my um, art journal pages, my mixed media items, I do create a frame around it at the end, that does come up later. Uh, and I'm just going to take the darker colour that we've been using. Now this isn't usually black because I do add black accents a little bit later. Uh, and I'm just going to do a little bit of inking and not too much, but a little bit of inking under where the butterfly will sit just to even out the colours. You're still going to have the texture in there. You're still going to see some of the colours through. So again, I'm taking Uncharted Mariner, which is what I did the... Uh, stamping in on the letters we did a little bit of the inking with it as well and it's just going to darken up the area that's going to sit under our butterfly and that just helps as you can see really helps that to pop off the page a bit more so hopefully that's another tip that will help you not only with your mixed media projects but really any any project where you're putting um, an element on a page and it seems to fade into the background. So I can glue this down. I might just leave the wings free to lift up while people are looking at the page or while I'm looking at the page or the card, but I'm not going to put foam underneath because if I put foam underneath, that's where I really start to get um, too much dimension. So just gluing the body down there. Don't forget your paper will, or cardstock may still be wet from a lot of your um, inks and colours and things and texture paste. So, so far we're starting to build up a really lovely, lovely page. Now included in my focal point, I am going to add in my sentiments. Now these could be, usually I would say black or white. We're going to work with more black and white in a moment, that comes to our fifth point, but I want to put my wording down. Now you can handwrite your wording, wording, you can type it out, you can print it out on the computer, you can die cut words, you can stamp words, there's so many ways you can uh, add wording to a page. Um, my favourite elements for adding wording, and I've just got a few here, is a paper pack that I have within the uh, Textures brand. And this is called Sentiments for All. Now, as I film this, the Sentiments for All pack has sold out. It flew out very quickly. We are getting some in back in in the middle of July. This is 2023, if you're watching this um, later. So I tend to like to take a long sentiment and cut it into two or three pieces. So and I'm going to go with black for this. So it stands out against the white butterfly. I've got here, small things make a big difference. Uh, or we've got, you can do anything, but not everything. Now I'm just checking I haven't used that one before because I think that would be absolutely perfect. Now, you may have already heard before of the rule of threes um, or the odd numbers rule. So uh, I would like to usually cut this into threes. But I just think it's going to work better if it's just the two lines. You can do anything but not everything. So just cutting this out with my scissors, the beauty of mixed media is that you do kind of have um, this messiness almost expected, so you don't need to worry about matting and layering, you don't need to worry about everything being perfectly straight. So I'm just going to snip there. I'm also going to snip a little bit off the ends. Some of the ends have quite a large block of colour at them, so you can do anything. We'll go there, and I'm going to stagger them, I think. So that's in the center of that starburst, that sunburst that we put on at the beginning. So I think they're going to work. Now you can really go with something a bit funky and twist them so they're not perfectly straight. That actually looks quite nice there like that. Or you can, of course, make them nice and straight. It's entirely up to you, but definitely staggering them, bringing, bringing that solid black, black a little bit out towards the edge of our colour works as well. So I think I'm going to put those down just like that. So just wet glue is absolutely fine. Like I say, most things go onto a journal page or a mixed media card quite flat. And it's just by having so many layers and so many elements that it looks really dimensional. So you can do anything but not everything. 
So step number five in the mixed media method is black and white contrast. Now, as I say, we've already started this. We're now going to really enhance that. Because the base of our page is white, I don't think we really need to go with much more white, but I think we can add some black. Now this is going to be done in two ways and it's small elements. So the ideal um, tool for doing this is two things. So a black ink, I've actually got a gray here, but I have got a black in another color. Here we go. So this is an old, a really old spritzing ink from Do Crafts Artiste. I'm not even sure if this is manufactured anymore. Uh, it's still got some black ink in there. So I'm going to use this first of all. And then there's another tool, which is a black pen. It's absolutely ideal and we'll come to that in a moment. So I'm going to do a few drops. Now this is not spraying because that's very unpredictable and sprays an awful lot of ink onto the page. I'm going to pick out using the tube that's inside the liquid. I'm just going to tap on it and get a few black blobs, mostly around my sentiment. But I'm quite happy for this to go onto the white butterfly. So this is subtle. You can do larger blobs. In fact, I just got one there, but if you purposely want to do a larger blob, what you do is you take off the lid, you unscrew it, you just gently depress, not all the way down so it sprays, you gently depress. So then gently depress and then do like a spraying motion and the ink rather than coming out of the nozzle will come out of the end instead. There we go. I think that's enough. Some really big splats. Now, I would definitely suggest um, lift off it in the excess. I think that one's a little bit too much there. So I'm just going to use my kitchen towel to soak some of that up. Now, if you prefer to go with white contrast, maybe you've worked onto a darker cardstock. Maybe you feel like you've put a bit too much color down in the first step. You could do the same, but with something like a white. Now it may be a white ink or it could be a white paint, something like white acrylic paint. We'll do the same job, water it down, splat it around. So while that's drying, I'm going to just talk about the next piece. And I have already touched on this once more to kind of finish our page off almost. Now, two things, what I want to do is add shadows behind some of our texture there because we've put everything down flat. We've already got lots of texture, but some areas we want to pick out, particularly the white bits. So for me, that is usually the texture paste or the focal point. So I'd like to add a little bit more detail and contrast to this. And one way I like to do that is again, coming back to either watercolor paints, you can use your inks, but I would go with a black or a gray, or you can use ink spray. This is probably the easiest. Water-based is ideal, and I'm just going to, underneath the wing here, is just scrape on from the, uh, from the nozzle there, from the tube, some ink. Let me lift this up so you can see what I'm doing. So I've put this, this is a gray, not a black. And then I'm just going to use my paintbrush again because it's a little bit more delicate. While that's wet, I'm going to dip this into my water get some water on there that's made that yellow but never mind and I'm just going to water that down let allow that to spread and drip now remember how we added in um, we added in the darker shade behind the die cut to make it kind of really pop well this is kind of a bit similar but what you're making it look like is that the there we go there we go. So we've got our darker area there that's dripped down from the butterfly. Now we can add more of the darkness here and keep building it up. There we go. So it looks like you've got ink coming out from under your butterfly. Now it may be, as I am here, that you need to actually hold your page at a certain angle depending on where your ink falls while it soaks in and dries. Okay, so I'm just doing that. I'm just holding it at this angle, dabbing up any excess pieces and just allowing that to sit. Now that's, I think that's soaked in. I can lay that down now. So this is getting a little bit more advanced doing areas like this, but I think if you've got something white, add some color to the, um, 
underneath of it like that some depth and that's just lifted that up even further now i keep saying it the last stage is a black pen so this is uh this is a uniball pin fine liner it's water and fade proof pigment ink so uh, this pen is absolutely ideal and this is going to frame my piece now you can frame this in a couple of ways you can do it with a white pen you could do it with my favorite tool at the moment to use is this one and this just creates a line of kind of faux stitching i won't do it on this one because i've got i've got nothing underneath to protect from the uh, for the next page but alternatively you can add simply some hand drawn hand doodled lines around the edge i feel like you always want to frame your page because it just brings it all together and this goes whether you're doing it in an art journal or whether you're doing this in a, or for a card front or something like this now i'm going to do two lines so i'm doing one right on the outside here and i'm making it particularly rough line so a little bit wobbly and then i'm going to do another one and i'm kind of going to overlap and wobble around the last line so i've got double lines of doodles now again if you've worked on a dark background you could do this with a white pen and i've just made this one a little bit smaller because we've got the black rings at the top now lastly you might want to go around some areas with your black pen as well so for example you might choose to go around the base of these circles the texture circles and really pick them out give them a bit of a drop shadow underneath that's quite a time consuming kind of um, uh, what's the word activity <laughs> but it would be worth it eventually so just sit and do little lines underneath you might want to take your black pen and just draw a square around your sentiment like so it doesn't have to be on everything just as much as you can so i go quiet while i'm sort of concentrating just around the center there so you can see how a black pen is wonderful for creating um, sort of depth and shadow so adding black and white accents which is adding your contrast to a page is really really going to finish it off now the last point I want to make, and I haven't created this as a step because it is getting a little more advanced, is maybe adding in different textures with things like fabric. Um, I think this is an additional thing you can move on to. So it may be things like buttons, wooden embellishments, actual fabric, so hessian, lace, stitching is a fantastic one because it remains very flat on the page. So for example, on this page, I'm not actually going to add stitching, but you could uh, embroider this body on here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some faux stitching with a zigzag with the pen but to give you an idea of how you could add stitching to a mixed media page really to make it look absolutely fantastically mixed media like so I'm just bringing those stitching so hopefully you can see that I've added a zigzag that could actually be real stitching on your page you could take it to your sewing machine if you're not in a book if you're just on a piece of paper but hopefully by me talking you through um, all of the separate steps to the mixed media method and uh, all of the elements why I do everything and how I do it um, hopefully that's given you the confidence to start your very own mixed media project follow along with the steps, mix them up if you wish, if you prefer to put your texture down before your colour, by all means. And I'd really love to hear and see how you're getting on with your own projects. Absolutely everything I've used here, certainly from the textures range, is all available linked down below. I'd love it if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and please do subscribe to my channel for more like this. Take care everybody and happy crafting.